so, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, as as we get going here, there's a couple things that I want to point out. Uh, you know, in the upper right hand corner, we've got a, a brand new uh, logo. Um, what you see there is the small circle uh, and the larger circle representing the idea of going from uh, acorn to oak tree or from idea to product. And that is really the thrust of today's discussion. Uh, and that is all about the Steinle DCS. The other thing I'll point out here is you'll notice the trademark. Uh, we've actually trademarked the name uh, DCS, Steinle DCS, so uh, both versions of that. Um, but the DCS stands for our Digital Control Solution, and uh, Thurston and I will be getting into more detail about that in just a minute. So uh, as part of our new rebranding, for those of you who are, who are not as familiar with Steinel, this may be your first time uh, hearing about us. Um, you know, we, we've got a tagline, we are the inventor's company. We are really proud to, to think of ourselves as people who think outside the box and look at things that are already there that people take for granted and try to add more value, bring more features and more functions uh, while always being mindful of the cost and keeping the cost in line. Um, and I think that's what you'll see from us here today. Um, you know, we, we're just uh, digital done better. If you've been following us the, the last couple of months, we've done a, a couple of really great webinars. I recommend you go back and, and click the links and go watch those because we've got some really good standalone solutions. They're great, world's best. And in many cases, you actually don't need to go to a digital solution uh, in order to meet code. Uh, but the world has sort of just migrated that way somewhat mindlessly in a way uh, because uh, sometimes it's easier, but we do really have some of the world's best sensors and technologies uh, for standalone control solution that are extremely cost effective. But that's not today's conversation. Uh, today's conversation is about the DCS and a couple more things. Um, you know, we, we've really worked on making it easy to install, uh, easy to commission, uh, and you know, we, we kind of take things from the perspective of, of the uh, end user and the installer um, and make sure that everything works uh, you know, simply and easily. Um, and also, we're extremely proud of the product quality um, that our name uh, communicates because we test everything. We manufacture everything in Europe. Uh, we quality control every step of the process. Uh, we are vertically integrated. We make our own plastics. We make our own circuit boards. We do our own assemblies. Uh, we don't outsource any of that. We don't do any of that in China. We do it all uh, within Europe. Very tightly controlled by a very strict uh, German quality management program uh, where we test every single piece of equipment coming off the line to make sure it conforms to uh, what we claim in the, in the cut sheets. So really, really important to us that what you get works when you get it. Um, all right, but let's get into the product itself. So the DCS, um, this is a terrific uh, solution. And you know, one of the things we're really excited about is while a lot of folks have come to market with similar types of solutions um, you know, that are all kind of similar in, in a lot of ways, you know, what we've done I, here, I think, has put together a unique set of capabilities into a single box um, that I don't know that anyone else has really done. And we've had the advantage of uh, being second mover, um, if you will, and coming in and seeing what the others have had to add and bolt on and duct taped on to their solutions. We've got it all in the box. You know, the energy codes have gotten very advanced and more complex, and we now have a single solution that does it all and very cost effectively. Uh, so just to, to give a quick rundown of some of the, the highlights, uh, we use a digital bus. Uh, this is really important. We use a, a two-wire, uh, non-polarized digital bus, which allows for very easy installation. Uh, basically, you have two wires. Um, uh, you just stab into the two terminal blocks, and then you stab into the two terminal terminal blocks uh, on on the next device, and that's it. No Cat5 cables, no RJ45 terminations. Um, you know, we don't have uh, pre-cut wire lengths that you need to use, and we don't have to do uh, field terminations with, you know, six, eight or more uh, my small wire 
uh, connections. Uh, we found from the field that that is the number one cause of pain and suffering in most um, uh, Cat5 type uh, install uh, solutions is that the, uh, the terminations wind up being faulty and the commissioning agents end up spending a lot of time trying to figure out which ones are faulty and re-terminating. Re so we've eliminated that whole concern. So at install, the contractor just simply stabs in a, a, a wire on both ends and you're good to go, no issues. Um, uh, we provide wireless programming. So um, we have uh, available on there, um, a Bluetooth connection. So there is a Bluetooth uh, wireless uh, communication protocol. So you can use your uh, phone or tablet to communicate back up to the device. Um, really simple, uh, iOS or um, uh, Android, both. Um, and uh, so really easy. You can program from the floor. You don't have to have access to the device. It can be up in a plenum, um, uh, no problem. Um, we have predefined and custom use case generation. So this is a, a great uh, attribute where you can basically come in, you can program a, a room, commission a room, and then you take that that uh, programming and you can just copy paste it to the next room. Uh, so as you go, you, you may have a specific customization for a, let's say a classroom, and you want it to be programmed a certain way with certain scenes programmed a, a, at certain light levels, and you can just basically use that in every room as you go. You know, you just save it, and then you now have that use case. Um, really, really great stuff. Um, and we'll be building over time, of course, uh, a library of, of predefined use cases that we'll have available that we can send out to you. You can load them up through your device. We can email them to you. You can load them up through your device, and then now you have a, a predefined use case that might, for example, meet specific code requirements. Or as the code requirements change, uh, we'll reprogram the, the use cases and then you, you're, you're ready to go. So um, we, we're, we're you know, preparing for the inevitable changes that always happen. Um, I think probably the very biggest differentiator in this product versus what you're going to see from everybody else in a three relay device, three zone controller, we have three independent 20 amp relays Whereas most of the other competitors, uh, what they'll do is they'll divide one 20 amp relay across three zones. Why is this such a huge advantage? Well, first off, uh, with three 20 amp relays, we can, we can support a much larger lighting load. Uh, so if you've got a large common area, uh, with one controller, we can, we can handle a much larger set of, of fixtures. So that's a big benefit right there. Secondly, what it allows us to do is with, with a single device, for example, if you have a multi-zone room and you wanted to use this one controller to, to control those three rooms, one of them might be a 277 volt circuit, the other might be a 120 volt circuit. Uh, so you can uh, independently on each of the different relays, you can go 120 or 277 on each of the different relays. So within one box, we can handle uh, multiple uh, voltages. So really strong uh, differentiator there um, comes into play and in, especially in things like if i've got a 277 volt set of lighting i've got some accent lighting at 120 volt and i've got a plug load that i want to control at 120 volt i can do all three of those different zones with one controller here uh, i've i've also got the ability because i've got three relays there i can give you current monitoring on each relay so most of the competitor product will give you current monitoring current monitoring per controller, I've actually got the ability to give you current monitoring for each of those circuits. Um, and of course, uh, we've got three independent zero to 10 volt dimming zones, which attach up to those. So uh, you can both uh, on off and dim up down on, on those circuits. Um, we've got receptacle control, as I mentioned, because they are each uh, 20 amp independently uh, rated, uh, we can control receptacles with those as well. Uh, Multi-zone daylight harvesting um, or daylight control. Uh, so with each of the different zones, you can connect a different photo cell uh, and you can uh, have your own different daylight harvesting settings for each of the different zones. Uh, Min-max dim levels, uh, hold off, force off, partial on, partial off, 
Um, and some of the biggies uh, that are unique here, we do have demand response capability uh, built in to each of the relays. Uh, and we've got, or excuse me, to the device. Uh, and we've got the astronomic and uh, regular time clock functions. This is a huge, huge benefit. So in the standard device here, uh, we have uh, both both uh, input for an external time clock. So if there happens to already be a time clock in place, you can interface from it to our device. Um, if you've got a master time clock out there, uh, we've got a, a basically a dry contact closure uh, input. And um, we've also got an internal time clock. And the internal time clock uh, is uh, set when you're commissioning the device. We take the location of the uh, commissioning tool uh, so you've got the phone, and the, the phone's location will uh, basically download uh, the correct set of astronomic tables, uh, and will upload those up into the device during commissioning. So now you have astronomic and regular internal time clock functions built into the device. Um, wireless BLE mesh connectivity. So uh, we've already got the wireless uh, communication from from the commissioning uh, device up to the to the DCS. Now you've also got the ability for the different DCSs uh, to interconnect via Bluetooth and create a mesh network. Uh, what is so interesting and exciting about that? Well, uh, what if I would like to take a large installation that has multiple different DCS devices? I can put a master on off switch for the entire location uh, that goes across the DCSs, but I can program a single button that will allow me to turn off all the lights uh, in, say, a, a restaurant, uh, like a fast food restaurant. If I wanted to turn off the dining room, the kitchen, the bathrooms, the manager's offices, the, the coolers, all at once, the outside sight lighting, whatever I wanted to do, I could program a single button on there that is the master back door switch. And as I'm walking out the door, I can hit on off, uh, hit the off button, and all the different DCSs. Uh, go and turn off all their different zones. So um, Bluetooth interconnectivity is a great little feature. Um, and we've got uh, BMS integration uh, via uh, BACnet TCP IP. Um, all of this uh, goes into the main device. Um, and roughly, you know, you're looking at a list price that's going to be, uh, we haven't finalized our pricing yet. But all in with everything you see here, uh, we're going to be under $400 uh, to the to the contractor, um, which uh, you know our market research suggests uh, with a time clock feature, uh, we are way below market uh, at that point. Um, and even uh, as we we price out uh, certain uh, projects, uh, we're already doing uh, layouts and quotes. Um, and for the layouts and quotes we're doing, we're finding that we're able to come in very competitive against uh, most of our competitor products. Um, you see an asterisk there uh, on the bottom on a couple of devices. Those features will not be available in the first release here coming up uh, in July. Um, we're looking at a, a date uh, shortly after that, but for the, uh, the initial rollout here as we start fulfilling projects uh, within the next uh, 30 days or so, um, we will uh, we will begin to add those features in, but for the first 30 days, uh, the the version that we're going to be shipping is going to be without uh, the BLE mesh and the BMS integration. So, um, um, Sean, we do have a few questions. Absolutely, uh, I thought we would. The first one is: Does current does the current monitoring function provide reading of actual value in amps? I'll take that one. It, it does. It shows you um, shows you the the voltage on relay one, relay two, and three. You have to put what the voltage is, but it'll automatically read it on relay one. And then it shows the uh, uh, the, the amps and the watts, and it does uh, a few other calculations there for you also if you select them. Okay. Uh, second question: Does the device have any battery backup that would help keep time correct in case of an interruption to power? It does. It has a um, a little coin cell battery that's uh, within the device itself. So no additional 
uh, batteries or anything like that are needed. Um, where is the BACnet TCP IP connection located? Uh, it's on the bottom of the device, and I think later in the yeah. slide, uh, there's next, a uh, next slide. Uh, it's on the next slide. Yeah. There you go. It's on the bottom, number nine. Um, and then the last question is, um, how do you program without BLE mesh? Well, it's not the last question because there are now a couple more after that. But so for the first one, how yeah. do you program without BLE mesh? So we, we program directly to each device with BLE. Uh, so the BLE mesh is the interconnectivity of the different devices to each other. Uh, so uh, in the traditional way, if you walk into, let's say, uh, just sticking with the classroom example, if I walk into the classroom, uh, I will pick up the, the nearest BLE devices uh, and I'll program the one that's here, right? And I, I also have some other indicators, but but basically you'll, you'll walk room to room and program each device uh, as you go. Uh, the BLE mesh would allow you to see all the BLE, uh, all the, the DCS uh, units together um, at the same time uh, across the network, reading one to the next, uh, extending across the network. But uh, the, the regular BLE programming uh, is, not a, is not reliant on the mesh. So. Um, is the BLE mesh SIG qualified or is it proprietary? Uh, Thurston, do you have an answer on that one? Um, I have to look at uh, at the uh, the what you just asked there. Um, as far as for the encryption, it's a AES one twenty eight encryption. Um, and we have quite a few questions, so I'll just ask one more just to keep the presentation going, and then uh, maybe we can answer the rest of the questions privately. Um, so uh, just last question for now, will the product be available at 347 volts? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, in this release, we're, we're not going to be including 347 volts. Uh, that's a We know that's a common request that comes out of Canada. Um, we have opened up uh, representation in Canada, um, and we're, we're aware that we need to uh, develop the 347 version uh, of the product. But uh, for this first release, uh, it's strictly 12277. Uh, I'll speak to that shortly, though. Don't let that uh, hold you up, because uh, we can still power the device, for example, with 120. And then we can have have it control, for example, contactors or something like this to be able to switch your 347 volt. So don't let that hold you up and uh, I'll help you and direct you in the right manner in order to make it happen. Excellent. Thank you, Thurston. OK, uh, so as Casey said, we'll we'll get moving along um, and uh, we'll, we'll certainly uh, try to. We'll try to power through this a little bit, get to the end, and have uh, time for questions. You know, with with 176 attendees uh, on on a webinar like this, you know, of course, we're going to have a lot of questions, and we may not have time to address them all. But uh, we'll also do our best to summarize them and uh, answer them all, and then get get that sent out to all of you who attended today. So, uh, okay, so moving on, uh, the the physical feature and layout of the device. Uh, you can see you, you've got the line voltage coming in uh, on on one. Uh, you've got uh, a little latch door uh, and uh, a couple of test buttons there. You've got uh, your low voltage terminal set of terminals there, um, which include uh, the three zero to 10 volt outputs. It includes uh, the uh, two wire data line. It includes the demand response. Uh, and it includes the um, time clock input. So that's what you see going from top to bottom, right to left there. Um, it mounts by a half inch threaded uh, nipple um, uh, with a couple of lock nuts provided. Uh, you've got a couple of LED, you've got, uh, sorry, one LED indicator there that, that gives you uh, status updates. Um, you've got a reset button. Uh, an RJ45 backnet port and uh, you know a, a channel for low voltage wiring. So one interesting thing, you know, obviously we've got separation. We've got low voltage coming in one side, which would go into the junction box, and then you've got the low voltage output that runs through the plenum. And of course, uh, no presentation on uh, 
control solutions would be complete without a wiring diagram. So as I just described, you've got the, uh, the three uh, inputs coming in from the left, um, uh, the, the voltages, uh, sorry, the, uh, the line uh, voltage uh, on the left-hand side and the low voltage on the right-hand side. Uh, and as described, the data line, the demand response, the time clock uh, going out to our, our devices there. So uh, there it gives you an overview of how it wires. And here is the stable of products that we have available uh, for uh, sensors and switches. Um, so uh, on the left-hand side, we start with what's new. On the right-hand side, you can see, uh, for those of you who are familiar with our line, uh, these are the uh, trusty digital control pro series. Um, you know, the IR Quattro, the IR Quattro HD, the US Quattro, US One-Way, US Hallway, DT Quattro. So all those great sensors with the great coverage patterns, the IR Quattro with, with its, you know, 4,800 points of detection and the U.S. hallway with its long range. The great news is we have not given up any of that. We have all the same technical advantages on sensors and coverage patterns as, as we've always had. Um, but now we've added to it over here a little bit of, of firepower. Uh, we have heard in the past uh, a few complaints. Um, you know, I've never quite understood it myself, but some people claim that the IR Quattro is uh, bulky. Uh, some people, for their sensibilities, they find it uh, ugly. Or uh, for a, a specifier who's very uh, concerned about the look of and flow of the ceiling, uh, it sticks out more than they would like. So we have developed here two new offerings that are the very uh, slimmest, slickest, smallest uh, sensors out there. So the IR Quattro Slim, um, really nice, smooth design, um, you know, barely protrudes off the ceiling at all, still gives a really great coverage. It's a smaller coverage area than the IR Quattro HD, but a, a very similar uh, type of coverage pattern. So you get very tight, presence control, uh, but in a smaller area. And with the IR Micro, that is uh, one of the smallest sensors I've ever seen. Uh, it is basically uh, about a one and a quarter inch disc and about a thumbnail sized lens uh, that barely protrudes from the ceiling at all. Um, coverage pattern on that is a little bit smaller um, and not quite as uh, dense as the uh, the IR Quattro HD. We've got a dedicated photo cell and we've got an array of wall switches, which we'll, we'll dive into a little bit more. So uh, feel free to load up the the uh, questions, but let's, uh, let's take a look at these first because we'll probably have answers to many of your questions on the next few slides. All right, so I was uh, gushing about the IR Quattro Slim. You can see the dimensions there. Uh, 3.1 inches uh, square with rounded corners. Um, it mounts two inches deep, um, and you can see the the uh, lens there is, you know, probably uh, something like maybe two inches uh, square. Um, gives you 408 points of detection uh, in a very small space. Uh, so, uh, yeah, really, really tight detection, really strong uh, presence detection, not just occupancy or vacancy. Um, very very thin uh, six millimeter protrusion uh, down off the ceilings, flat lens design. You've got the nice square coverage pattern, um, and uh, yeah, 13 by 13 in terms of presence detection. You can go a little bit bigger if tangential motion is enough, um, and it's got the integrated uh, photo sensor as well. So really nice uh, sensor, uh, really good looking, um, uh, great response to. Uh, specifiers who don't like the the bulkiness of the and, and the the shape and design of, of some of the uh the older sensors um, moving to the micro um, even smaller design you can see there across the, the front face 1.69 inches uh, tiny uh, you can see there uh, the the two uh, dolly connectors uh, that we use for the for the two wire uh, digital bus uh, one's an in and the other one's an out, so you can run serial to the next device. Um, 
but uh, you got the spring clips there to hold it in place. Um, it is plenum rated. You just stick it right up there. It does not need to be mounted to a junction box or anything like that. Uh, it's passive infrared. Uh, you know, we apologize. We know our, our competitors only give uh, somewhere between 50 and 100 switching zones typically in their top of the line sensors. Uh, we like to blow that away by a factor of 10 or 100, but this one only just beats it 168 to 100 um, in terms of switching zones. So um, really a micro lens, that micro, that lens is, is uh, roughly just a little more than a half inch wide um really really tiny um uh, so if you're looking for small smaller than small the smallest small thing that you've ever seen uh this might be it this might be the smallest uh standalone um mounted sensor it's essentially you know what you would get in a fixture mount um but we've put it in a ceiling mount design so really simple easy um, it also does have the benefit of being IP65 rated uh, uh, when mounted. So uh, the, the front the front panel is, you know, the, obviously the the connections, those little uh, dolly connectors in the back are not necessarily uh, IP65 rated, but uh, mounted into a ceiling, you can power wash that baby, um, no problem. Um, um, let's move to the next one. The photo cell. So. Uh, very cool uh, open loop, closed loop uh, photo sensor. Um, and you, know, you can see there, you've got the two fields uh, of control. So you would mount it towards a window with uh, the front uh, window looking at, or the front uh, lens looking at the window and the main lens looking down at the surface. So you've got open loop, closed loop um, um, uh, capabilities both. And Thurston, why don't you share just a, a brief uh, interlude? I know you get very excited about this. So um, why don't you tell everybody about how it calibrates in the field? Yeah, so daylighting has been one of those things that's been a problem for a long time. So we wanted to make this very simple and very accurate for you. Um, whenever you get ready to set this up, it uses the, the, the light uh, meter in your smartphone to allow it to be able to go through a calibration phase. And whenever it goes through the calibration phase, it also calibrates to a professional um, uh, light meter. Uh, whenever you get ready to set it up, you'll go to calibrate. Uh, you'll put what foot candle level you want at desktop, say 30 foot candles, something like this. The next step, then uh, it'll ask you to give an input of what your light meter is reading. You put in that value and then you hit uh, start. And then what it does is it goes through a process where it turns the lights off and it takes a measurement using your smartphone. Then it turns them on, it turns them on at, at one volt. It takes a measurement, goes to two volts, takes a measurement, all the way up, all the way through the, through the 10 volts. And then whenever it is uh, finished, it'll say complete and it'll dim your lights down to whatever level that you specified, Let's say 30 foot candles, for example. So it makes it a very easy way to be able to uh, commission and do your daylighting set points. Another uh, uh, function of it is the plug and play feature of it makes it such that if uh, the system recognizes if the photo, photo cell is connected and when it is, it assigns it to zone one and then automatically sets it uh, to a point where it's uh, somewhere roughly between 30 and 50 foot candles at desktop. If you want it to be very, very accurate, then you have to go through that uh, commissioning process that I just explained. So um, before we move on to switches, um, Casey, do we have any questions on the, on the new sensors? Uh, there are not. There are not. All right, well, then let's when, get, let's get right funny. to it. You, you inspired somebody. Someone just wrote, we got one. It is, can you use a DIM24 sensor with the integrated photo cell as well and use the PC occupancy from a single device versus using two devices when needing daylighting in the space? Yeah, great question. So the 24 volt devices are separate and they don't communicate digitally. That's the reason that we made digital type sensors. So for example, if you want to use our dual tech or our IR Quattro HD sensor, they look exactly the same, except they connect onto the bus. All of them, every single sensor, that we make, every single presence detector that we make also has the photo cell, and yes, you can use it within those spaces. 
However, it's very common <laughs> that the best location for a sensor isn't the best location for a photo sensor. And uh, that's the reason that we have the, the, the two separate cases. But in a small room, for example, where you only have a, a single zone of daylighting or something like this, absolutely you can use the photo sensor in our regular presence detectors uh, uh, to achieve that. Excellent. Okay, so the switches. Um, we've got a couple of things to talk about on switches. Uh, so this is the new switch that, that we're rolling out. These are really very, very cool, uh, touch-sensitive, glass-based, uh, uh switches so they they currently come in with a white background we don't have multiple colors at this time they they are available potentially we we will be looking into uh providing other colors but for the time being we we are limited to white um and uh these have a great glass uh face uh programmable switch so the nice thing about the glass face especially in the current environment um everything is back uh, backlit and back uh, engraved, so you can uh, sta sanitize these to your heart's content. You can sanitize them every 15 minutes, and you will not do any damage to the engraving uh, and lettering that that you see there. Um, so that's a very handy little feature, in, uh, given uh, the state of the, the environment. Um, now we've got uh, three uh, types of switches depicted here. These are the ones that we've brought into stock. We've got actually 10 different versions of switches uh, that are available for purchase uh, that are standard. Uh, but these three uh, are the ones that we're keeping in stock. And um, uh, you can also order a completely customized uh, switch. So you, you see down there on the bottom, for example, that would be a a four, uh, a two zone four button switch. Uh, you could have uh, those custom set. Uh, you could also customize the one on the upper left. For example, you may want to change S1, S2, S3. In a classroom, you may change those to uh, study, uh, lecture, and test as three different uh, scenarios that the teacher might just want to be able to pop a button and have the classroom adjust to a certain light level. Um, but uh, as, you, as we go through these, um, we'll show you kind of what they, they all will look like. Um, scrolling down a little bit, um, on the next slide, you've got uh, our collection of one zone switches. Uh, so you've got a one zone blank, a one zone on off, and a one zone dimming switch. On that dimming switch, what's cool, you tap that uh, slider bar anywhere in the middle and that's where the light level comes on. So. Uh, you can auto dim to, you know, three quarters, tapping three quarters of the way up, up the bar there. Um, and of course, you've got a master on off. Uh, sliding down to two zones, you've got um, essentially the same array of those three, but in two zones on the next slide. Uh, and what we're bringing into stock up front right now for July uh, are, are those. Um, what we won't have in stock at launch, we will eventually be stocking as we see the increasing demand. Um, but we've got a, a multi-zone, a two-zone on-off and a two-zone dimming. Uh, and then as we move next to the three zones, uh, same configurations, but in three zones. And then last and certainly not least, the, the switch that has gotten the most uh, acclaim uh, in our initial um, rollouts and, and uh, webinars here, is what we call the 13 button switch. Uh, uh, it's sort of like the everything bagel. Um, you've got three zones of on off and up down. You've got a master on off switch and you've got three zones available across the bottom. Um, and again, customizable, but um, you know, basically it's a very intuitive way to give the user full control of all three zones of, of the, uh, the DCS. Um, one master button to turn everything on all at once, and then the opportunity to use three zones. So great application for a classroom, uh, larger office spaces, um, you know, tons of great applications. And in, in the early stages of, of doing layouts, um, you know, we've got, a, we've got probably about 30 layout requests in our queue that we've uh, completed in, to some degree, and some, have, some are completed, some are not, but we're seeing a lot of great applications for the 13 button switch. 
Um, so before moving on um, off of this case, any questions on switches at this point? Definitely, we've got a bunch. Um, I'm not sure if you're getting into list prices, but somebody did have a list price um, of a typical two button switch. Uh, all the switches are the same um, and, uh, because they're they're basically all the same uh, technology, same material, same components, same same everything. Uh, so uh, list price is is somewhere uh, roughly under a hundred bucks. Okay, um, and then um, if the lights are dimmed and <clears throat> time out and time out to off, do they come back on at the dimmed level they were at before turned off? Yes, they do. Okay. Um, and then uh, how long does it take to get switches in grade? Uh, yeah, so for the customized switches, uh, we're looking at roughly an eight week uh, turnaround. Um, you know, we, we think we can probably squeeze a little bit out of that. Uh, it's somewhat of a new process, a new supply chain for us, but um, you know, we can definitely uh, commit to an eight-week turnaround if there's an urgency to get it in five or six. Uh, I would guess we might be able to do that as well. Um, there and there is uh, variable pricing based on uh, quantity, right? So, for if you want to just have one switch that says Sean's office, um, there's going to be quite a, a heavy uh, penalty for that. But uh, if you decide uh, you want all the classrooms, as as mentioned before, to say, um, you know. Uh, presentation, uh, test, and study, uh, there, there likely won't even necessarily need to be an upcharge for that as long as the volume is, is uh, significant enough. Okay, um, do these switches fit in a normal sized wall box? They do, they, yeah, fit, first. they fit into a, a, a single gang um, wall box. The size of them is the same size as a single gang cover plate. So no additional cover plate or anything like that is needed. And it gives you the advantage of having the additional real estate. So in this case, then uh, that's the reason that we can have, for example, 13 buttons on that switch. And just a few more. Um, can you change and save scenes from the wall station? Not from the wall station. You program the scenes through the, uh, through the app. Um, what kind of testing has been done on the glass for the keypads? Shatterproof ratings, et cetera. If the glass breaks, what are the results? Yeah, so the, the it's a two-part construction. There's a back part that has the power supply in it, and then there's uh, pin connectors that go between the, the power supply part and then the front part that has the glass. So in the event that there was something that was uh, damaged, broke, shattered, something like this, then the the front plate uh, snaps off and you can snap on another one. Okay. Um, can multiple room controllers be networked to allow control to more than three zones from a switch? Yeah, Sean hit on that a little bit earlier. Uh, yes, uh, that's the intention. Uh, in the very first pieces that we put out, the mesh, so the wireless function of the mesh, uh, uh, isn't going to be released in that. Uh, that will come uh, shortly after. Uh, the other way in order to be able to uh, connect them together is through the BACnet port. All right, um, just two more. Uh, can you confirm that the engraving is um, an additional price, not included? The engraving, uh, so uh, we have the standard switches that uh, Sean just presented. But if you want customized switches, we have separate pricing for that, and it depends on the quantities uh, that are there. And when we establish pricing and provide it to everyone, uh, we'll have that. Additionally, whenever you get ready to do the customized switches, uh, we'll have a, a form where that you fill out basically that, that puts all the text that you want uh, on, on switches. Okay, uh, maybe let's just do one more for now. Um, can these be wired or controlled as a three-way? Yes, absolutely. You can connect multiple switches together in three-way, four-way. You can have different types. You can have different switches doing different functions, or you can have them doing exactly the same functions. Okay, so we can uh, hold off on the questions if we have time at the end. Maybe we can pop back to some of these. But... 
We'll Great. stop. There. Thanks, Casey. All right. Uh, one more item related to switches uh, that that we uh, left. Um, we we have another solution which we call the switch coupler. Um, it's a third party source device, as you can see in the picture there. Um, but we have tested it and certified it. We'll be providing it through Steinel in the U.S. Um, and basically, this product, what it allows us to do is it allows us to take an ordinary momentary contact switch, uh, run the wiring into uh, those four switch inputs, and then we can run a two-wire data line back to the bus. So uh, if the $100 uh, or so uh, programmable wall switch uh, is more than you really need and you just want to put a simple momentary contact switch or if you're retrofitting into an existing double gang box and a single gang uh, uh, switch solution is going to look wonky uh, you can certainly go with a uh, this is an example of two uh, single pole dual throw momentary decor style switches which would fit into a normal faceplate, they might already be pre-existing, but we can wire them instead into our switch coupler here, and then the switch coupler connects it back up to the dolly bus. So this is a great way to uh, either maintain a, a consistency of look throughout a, a space that, that might want uh, the traditional decor style uh, switch, um, uh, as well as, uh, you know, kind of solving for if you want to do a four gang multi-gang whatever uh, type of scenario you could just use a traditional decor style switch and it's also uh, going to be significantly less expensive those products you see there on the right hand side obviously significantly less expensive uh, and the switch coupler there also uh, significantly less uh, expensive i don't have list pricing on that just yet but uh think on the order of you know 50 bucks or something all right. All right, and just a, a quick overview. Uh, I think, in the interest of time, you know, this this presentation is dedicated to the IR, uh, sorry, the uh, uh, digital control solution. Um, there's really nothing new to talk about on on the Control Pro line here, uh, other than they are now available in digital. Um, so. Uh, as effectively, the only difference you'll you'll really notice is the back plane will have a uh, a two wire um, you know dongle coming out as opposed to a uh, array of wiring options uh, in the in the traditional standalone. Um, and again, if you want to learn more about these, we covered them in deep detail in our more recent uh, uh, webinar on standalone controls. So. But these are world's best highlight IR Quattro HD and US hallway. You can't beat those um, as far as coverage goes. Um, but in the interest of, of sticking to topic and, and getting through all this, let's let's move on here. Yeah. All right. Um, plug and play operation. Uh, let's let's you know kind of make this a little bit quick. Uh, I'll give a quick overview, and then Thurston, maybe you can hit just a couple of the highlights from the bottom, but. Um, basically, out of the box, as I mentioned at the top, out of the box is plug and play. It works. Uh, it does not need to be programmed or commissioned uh, in order to start working. Um, so, uh, really great, great solution here. You, and as soon as the installer installs it and connects all the devices, uh, the the uh, DCS unit itself will recognize what devices are on there, and it will uh, they come pre-programmed, factory preset. Uh, to the settings you see there. Thurston, if you want to hit the highlights on how they're preset, that would be great. Yeah, you bet. I'd love to. So uh, what we wanted to do is, again, provide a code compliant solution. So we looked at ASHRAE, IACC, California Title 24, and we put together a group of, of uh, a sequence of operation that would be compliant in those uh, all of those areas. Uh, for, for, for example, uh, classrooms, offices, this sort of thing. Um, the system automatically recognizes what it's connect, what's connected to it. So for example, if you connect an occupancy sensor, it recognizes that this is an occupancy sensor and it puts it at a preset level. Uh, the, what we did is we set it for a 20 minute time delay. Uh, if it's an ultrasonic sensor or, or a dual tech sensor, we put the sensitivity at maximum. And then we set it for partial on at 50%. Now you can change these things afterwards, but this is the preset. Um, the photocell, it automatically recognizes that there's a photocell connected to it, 
it selects it for an open loop type of a function and it assigns it to relay one. Uh, after about one minute, it analyzes the room uh, as soon as it's powered up. After about one minute, then the daylighting will begin and it will give you desktop level at somewhere between 30 and 50 foot candles. Now, the photo cell is also set for hold off type of a function, not a force off function. And then the switches, depending on the switch type that you select, then you can have a specific sequence of operation that ha happens right out of the box. So for example, if you have one daylight zone, one general zone, and one uh, receptacle load that needs to be uh, controlled, you could choose the, the, the SS4, for example, and it would automatically do that. If you need three zones, separate zones of dimming and uh, daylighting in zone one, you could choose one of our three zone dimming switches or the multi-switch, for example. So um, whenever you look at the different room types, simply by selecting the proper switch, then you can have a new plug and play sequence of operation. And then beyond that, then yes, you can use the use cases, but the simple plug and play, uh, we tried to make it so that it's code compliant for all of these things. Uh, demand response is also code compliant out of the box uh, for the state of California. Um, so it's uh, it, it says when it receives the demand response signal, it set it at a maximum 85% of, uh, of design illuminance for that space. That's the, awesome. the base. there's other pieces, but those are the most important. Awesome. So let's talk about some some real life uh, applications um, and some of the early designs that we've been working on. We picked a few highlights uh, of some of the, the layouts that we've received in the last couple of weeks, and just wanted to show a couple of things that are that are you know kind of interesting, unique, different, better uh, than what you might have seen before. So here we had a, a, a large office layout, and we snipped this little section here along a window of uh, private offices. Uh, so you've got six private offices here in a row. I think there was one or two more. Uh, it might have been eight or nine in a row. Um, and then, you know, turned a corner and we had another row up down the next bank of windows. Um, but what you can see here is you've got um, a very light uh, wattage load in each of those. So uh, we did not necessarily need to have multi-zone daylight harvesting. Uh, but we do have uh, in each of those three zones, the, we have a sensor and the sensor uh, has on board its own uh, photo cell. So uh, you've got basically one DCS is able to cover the three different uh, offices um, and we've got the the slim sensor uh, which is more than an, more than ample to cover the, that space plus in that size space you're going to get uh, pretty much uh, a, a presence detection level of, of uh, detection with that sensor um, and we put a, a, a one uh, zone single zone uh, slide dimmer switch in each of those offices so uh, rather than going one DCS controller for each office, we went with, uh, you know, one for three. Uh, you know, you're looking at, you know, for these six offices here, you're looking at something on the neighborhood of, mm, you know, uh, uh, roughly about uh, three, about three hundred dollars a room, give or take, uh, in order to get uh, full. Uh, digital control. Um, so really slick uh, using one DCS for three different offices. Look at the next example. Um, in the same uh, in the same uh, office environment, we had a, a corner office which was a bit larger, slightly larger uh, lighting load, slightly larger uh, window uh, configuration, and with uh, multiple daylighting zones. So you can see on the right hand side, we added a photo cell and we used one DCS to control two rooms, one with two zones of daylighting control and one with a single uh, setup similar to what we saw in the previous uh, example. So again, uh, enable to use a single slide dimmer to control uh, both each, for each room. Uh, so even though I've got two daylight harvesting zones, I can use the one slide dimmer uh, to control both uh, daylighting zones with manual override from the switch. Um, here we have a uh, a school with some some bathrooms, and you know one of the interesting things about this um, 
you know, we've got the DCS controlling both uh, the men's and women's um, with a third relay available for the common exhaust fan. Um, and then we've got a couple of um, unisex bathrooms on the ends where we went with a standalone, uh, just a simple IR uh, wall switch, right? So very simple uh, solution there. So uh, another example uh, from, from our recent um, experiences. Um, and then lastly, a, a classroom uh, that had um, a, a, a couple of interesting things about it. Um, so you can see here uh, that actually we've got a, a photo zone. Uh, we've got a daylighting zone. That's a window in the back area there. And actually, that's a, a two zone area. There's, there's actually two different lighting zones in there, which can both be controlled by that single photo cell. Um, so you've got... Uh, uh, a really neat ability to uh, use that photo cell uh, and programmable step-down function to cover the primary day daylighting zone in there as well as the secondary daylighting zone uh, within that little dash line. Um, you've got a pair of DT Quattros and you've got a 13-button uh, 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 programmable switch there. So um, again, you know, really robust uh, multi-zone configuration. Uh, you've got a powerful uh, switch interface uh, at the front of it. Uh, you've got, you know, this kind of tricky multi-zone daylight harvesting requirement. Um, and all of that is very easily straightforward met with uh, one, two, three, four devices. Um, and then you've got an auditorium, right? So this is one of those... Uh, really large spaces uh, we've got three zones lots of light fixtures um, you know big loads so one dcs can actually control this entire auditorium uh, the mounting heights over the audience are going to be extremely high and you've got the ir quattro hd able to mount up to 32 feet so we can cover that uh, and then you've got the uh, the two switches where you've got you know multiple zones you might have or multiple scenes uh, so you might have a, a scene where it's uh, presentation or, or you know uh, the act uh, uh, set up. You might have a, a an audience entry, uh, and you might have some kind of a, a lecture mode or something where you'd have a, a mixed lighting scenario. So uh, all of that available, programmable, uh, and again very simply done with you know six. Uh, IR uh, Quattro HDs because of the great coverage range and and, and mounting heights, uh, two wall switches and the DCS. That's it. It's a real simple, straightforward for what is sometimes a, a somewhat complex uh, solution. All right. With that, uh, before we go to the final round of questions here at the end, uh, I will say we, we will have another uh, webinar upcoming soon. Uh, it's not scheduled or calendared yet, but um, we'll be doing lots more of these. Um, if you have a lot of really deep, detailed questions and want to learn at a deep level, we, we had a, a really wide audience today. So I just wanted to, to let you know, if you'd like for us to do a, a private screening, if you will, a classic lunch and learn for uh, you know your firm or a small group of engineers, we're more than happy to have a very interactive, you can ask all the questions you want. We'll set it up uh, through your rep agency and uh, regional sales manager. Um, Thurston and I are both available. Uh, so, you know, w whatever you need. Um, we're also doing layouts. So uh, our layouts team is, is pretty much caught up. Our, our usual turnaround time is two to three days since we started talking about the DCS our backlog has gotten really full and we're up to about a four or five day turnaround now uh, which I, I still believe is is above industry standards so keep sending us more projects keep sending us more things to look at for the time being we're doing most of the work ourselves uh, we are about to turn over uh, you know you can get the blue beam objects you can do the layouts yourself uh, however, we're still holding back on pricing until our official launch uh, in July. Uh, and, uh, you know, at that point, we'll be rolling out uh, the, the ability for everybody. We'll do a training on how to do layouts based on all the things we've learned over these last few weeks. Um, but like I said, in the meantime, send us all the layouts you can and, and we'll get them turned around for you. 
Um, with that, Casey, what do we have for questions? Yeah, we have quite a few questions. So I guess as a general announcement, um, as we're coming up on the hour, if we don't get a chance to answer your questions, your RSM will follow up with um, you directly on those. One question that was asked was about data sheets. So just for everyone to know, um, the data sheets are getting updated and we'll be uploading those today. So maybe wait till tomorrow just to make sure you have the latest version of the data sheet. Um, and the presentation and the recording also will be emailed out to you announcing when it's up on our YouTube channel. Um, so we've got um, a live question. So I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. You may have to unmute yourself on your end. So um, go ahead. Um, sometimes people hit the raise hand button accidentally, but it looks like D McDonald, you are self muted. Um, I think that question went away. So one question, um, how is emergency lighting handled? Yeah, so we have some separate UL 924 devices. Uh, we, uh, they're through uh, LVS. Many of you are probably familiar with them. Uh, and yes, there's shunt devices and transfer devices. There's zero to 10 volt dimming devices and simple on off devices also. Okay, um, is the demand response capability open ADR 2.0 certified? The demand response takes a contact closure, uh, so it doesn't communicate directly to the ADR. Okay, um, is there only one neutral wire on the room controller? If you have different voltages per relay, you need multiple neutrals. Great question, glad you saw that. Yes, it's true. We only have one neutral. The neutral is used to power our device. So the, the first relay, the input wire to the first relay also powers our device and we need a neutral for that. The other two contacts are dry, isolated contact closures. They don't uh, have a neutral that comes to it. Yes, obviously you have to have a neutral um, uh, to complete the circuit. But our device only has one neutral. Okay, and uh, Dee McDonald, I do see that it's you're only self-muted, so if you can unmute yourself now, you can go ahead and answer, ask your question. Okay, let's just do one more question. Um, can this be used for fire alarm or security input for the whole system? Good question too. So the, uh, there's a contact input. Uh, we previously uh, uh, called it a time clock input, but that input can be used for various other things, one of which can be a fire alarm. Whenever you do that, what you, uh, you know, whenever you're programming the app, um, you create a sequence of operation when that contact closure happens. So for example, if you want the lights to go to full bright, uh, whenever that contact closure happens and uh, disable the switches, disable the occupancy sensors, all of this sort of thing. You simply create the sequence of operation for the, the, the contact closure input. So now whenever it receives that input, it performs the action that you've created. Okay, um, are there multi-gang switch plates available? Yeah, so the, um, the, the, the glass switches themselves are uh, just a uh, single gang. Again, they're the same size as a, a single gang cover plate and they fit to a single gang box. If you need to do multi-gang uh, or there's an existing multi-gang box, either you have to put an adapter on there so that it goes to single gang. So in the past, maybe they had two separate switches doing two separate loads. And instead, this time, you're just going to use a single switch that has two zones on it. That's one possibility. But if you want to create, uh, keep the same look and you want to have multi-gangs, maybe you want to have four gangs uh, there and you want to have uh, four separate switches, that's the whole reason that we are also offering the, um, uh, the that little adapter that he showed you before. We call it a switch coupler. And that switch coupler allows you to have four separate inputs to it it takes those four separate inputs and then and then uh, converts that uh, onto the data line so that we can then we can have uh, scene control and things like this from just simple contact switches 
And if you need to use multiple ones, uh, say that we, you have a four gang uh, cover plate and you're using single pole double throw switches. So now you have eight contacts possible there. Uh, you can use uh, uh, two of the switch couplers to accommodate those, uh, those eight contacts. Okay, it's a few minutes past the hour. So um, like I said, we'll get, if you'd already asked a question, we'll get that regional sales manager in touch with you to answer directly. And if anyone needs to contact the regional sales manager, go ahead and look at steinel.net. And if you go to the menu sales, you'll see a map of the United States and Canada, and that will give you the um, phone number and email address of the Steinel representative to call. So Sean, if you wanna go ahead and close it out, I think we're about ready. Yeah, thanks everybody. This is this has been a, a really great interactive session. We appreciate all the interest, the comments, the questions. Um, you know, we're we're really excited about this. This is a great turning point for our company. Um, you know, those of you who know our brand know we make the the very best, highest quality products, and we've been limited to just the standalone portion of the controls market. This opens up just a huge world for us. Uh, where we can take everything that we know how to do really, really well and just do it, do more of it and do it digitally. So we're really excited to work with you guys. And, and as mentioned, more than happy to, you know, continue our, our tradition of, of serving customers as best as we can. So whatever we can do as far as doing deeper dive uh, training sessions with Thurston, we're more than happy to schedule those for you. Uh, get us some layouts to work on for you. Get us some quotes to do for you. And, uh, you know, we're just looking forward to, to getting out there and getting this thing out into the market. So we appreciate all the support from everybody. And thanks for coming out today. Just remember, uh, stay safe. Thanks.